Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. This is the day, listen, that we came to give God some praise, give him his adoration, give God our first praise, our first worship. Good morning to all of you. We want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up. Thank you for allowing us to have a great rest last night. Thank you for the brand new mercy that you gave us this morning. Good morning to you, Sister Angela. Good morning to all of you that are coming in the room. Greet me as you come in. Greet one another as you come into the room. Let me know that you're here. Let one another know that you are in the place this morning, ready to give God some praise. Good morning to you, Sister Miller, Sister Lane. Good morning. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. And then we're going to get right into what I believe that Lord has for us on this morning. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this brand new mercy. We thank you, Lord God, that your compassions are new to us every day. And Lord, every time that we need a thing, Lord God, all we got to do is ask you and it shall be given to us. We thank you, Lord God, that we don't put our trust in man, but we put our trust in you, God. We commit our ways to you, Lord God, knowing that you will bring everything, God, that we need. You will bring it to pass. God, you will work it out for our good and in our favor. We bless your name for all that shall take place in the next few minutes of time. We praise you, God, for how you're going to move and abound in a mighty way, Lord God. Come into our homes, into our bedrooms, our kitchens, our closets, wherever we are, Lord God. Allow your anointing, God, to be strong in those places, in these places, Lord God, that we may feel your presence. And when we feel your presence, Lord, we will know that you are with us, working out every situation. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning to all of you. Good morning, Sister Doris. Sister Nimby, good morning to you. Uh, Bishop Jones, thank you so much for joining. Listen, get Bishop Jones every morning at 6 a.m. He is sharing a word with the people of God, a word that is bringing them life. My God, in life evermore. Good morning to you, Sister Mary. Good morning to those of you who I did not greet while I was yet in prayer. I thank God for you. I don't take you for granted that you have got up with me this morning just to hear a word from the Lord and to participate in what it is that the Lord has for us. Good morning to you, Sister Sonia. Sister Mary, again, good morning. Thank you all so much for this word. Listen, this word this morning, it really it was really you know, steal into miracles from yesterday. Good morning, Sister Deborah, Sister Annabelle, good morning. Sister Natalie, good morning to you. God bless all of you. Brother Frank, good morning. I was still into miracles. And another word of the Lord came to me, Sister Terry, good morning to you, pertaining to miracles and the creating the atmosphere for a miracle. And yesterday I talked about, you know, what the kind of atmosphere. Good morning to you, Prophet Davis. Good morning to you, Sister Terry. What kind of atmosphere do we need to have in order for a miracle to happen in our lives? Good morning, Sister Cherise. There are so many of us that need God to do something. We want God to do something in our lives. And how do we create that atmosphere where miracles, listen, will thrive, where we can have a miracle, where we're something that we cannot do, that we know that only God can do it. I found another word in the past, in, in, of God and um, found in Mark chapter 7. Here we are talking about, good morning to you, Sister Shante, the Syrophoenician woman. And this, my God, this passage of scripture, I've read it over and over again. And many times, you know, Jesus, he, 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 I love him. He's the master of repetition. He's a master of that because sometimes we may not get something when we read something the first time and then we have to go over it again and be like, oh my God, we get this. We get it now, Lord, we get it. But we're talking about the Syrophoenician woman and, and in the word of God, this is a different kind of, of, of passage. Good morning to you, Sister Sharon. A different kind of passage because here it seemed like the Lord was getting fed up. It seemed like the Lord was being quite rude um, when he was dealing with this Syrophoenician woman. And in this story, um, again, it's a story I think about miracles, about things that the Lord wanted to do in the lives of people. But there was a woman from the region of Tyra, and, and she was seeking Jesus out for a miracle. So you recall on yesterday, if you didn't get yesterday's meditation, go back and get it again. Because we were talking about what is that atmosphere? How is it? that a miracle can happen in your life. First of all, you need the presence of the Lord. You need Jesus to be in the place. You need to invite him to the party. He needs to come. He needs to be there. And then you need to ask him. 
this woman, this Syrophoenician woman, she wanted a miracle. She needed something to happen in her life. She needed something to happen for her child. Her, her child had a problem. She had a, a demon that was in her, and the woman wanted that demon out. And this is, this is, she was a pagan woman, but she sought out Christ to heal her daughter from this affliction. And it seemed as though, it appeared as though Jesus was ignoring her. It appeared as though he was ignoring her. And, and But when he did finally respond to the woman, he called her something out of her name. And I thought, wow, Jesus, you really fed up with the people. You really must be very tired. But he called her something out of her name. He called her a dog. He said, why would I waste my miracles? Why would I waste the things that I'm doing? Good morning to you, Sister Nicole. Sister Phyllis, good morning to you. Why would I waste them on the dog? And it seemed that because of Jesus and all of his love and all of his compassion, seemed that he wouldn't have responded to her in that way. Seems that that was a pretty harsh response, even for Jesus, but a woman, a person who is begging for some mercy for her daughter, just as maybe you. Sometimes you feel like the Lord is ignoring you. And I'm talking about creating an atmosphere. Now I'm talking about creating an atmosphere in yourself where miracles and signs and wonders can be wrought in your space before your very eyes. But Jesus, he responded to the woman in a different kind of way that we would have expected. Let me read it. It goes in Mark chapter 7, start with verse number 24. It just says, Jesus had left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know it. Yet he could not keep his presence secret. You know, everywhere Jesus goes, somebody's going to tell it. Why? Because of all the great and wonderful things that the Lord has done. In fact, the Bible says as soon as she heard about him, as soon as this woman, this Syrophoenician woman heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by impure spirits, she came and she fell at his feet. And the woman here was a Greek born in Syrian Phoenicia. And she begged Jesus to get the demon out of her daughter. She begged him to get the demon out of her daughter. And oftentimes, listen, we may have asked Jesus for something. We may have asked for a thing. And maybe it seemed like he was ignoring us. Maybe, you know, and we may have gone away. We may have said, you know what? I, he's not hearing me. He's not going to do this thing that I want him to do. But the word of the Lord here says that she begged him. She, she didn't give up. She begged him. And then the Lord said, first let the children eat all they want. He told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. But this did not discourage the Syrophoenician woman. Why was that? Because she needed a miracle. She needed something to happen in her life. And many times we are discouraged. We're discouraged by the things that happen around us. We're discouraged by what somebody says to us. We're discouraged by what somebody does. Even though we need a miracle. How desperate are you for God to work something out in your life? How desperate are you for God to do something great and powerful in your life? How desperate are you for God to turn something around in your situation that's going to bring you victory and not bring you distress and turmoil? How desperate are you? This woman here was desperate because the woman, listen, she was so desperate. She had a response for Jesus. Her response was this. She says, even the dogs under the table get to eat the children's crumbs. Listen, she's saying, listen, I understand what you're saying, Jesus. And I understand that, you know, you have no dealings with the Greek. I understand that. And I understand that the Jews are the ones that maybe you're catering to. I understand all of that. She says, but I'm willing to take the scraps. Because I know even the scraps that you can give me are powerful enough to heal my daughter of this demonic impurity. Of this demonic spirit that is plaguing her. And then he told her, I love suddenly blessings. And then he told her, for such a reply, you may go because the demon has left your daughter. And out of obedience, she went. She left where the Lord says she went home and she found her child lying on the bed. And a demon had left. Look at this passage of scripture. Look at this. Something that I can chew on, that I can meditate on. Because even if I didn't think that the Lord heard me, 
Even if I didn't think that, if I didn't feel that I was worthy to receive what it is that I was asking the Lord for. This Syrophoenician woman is saying to me, is, is showing me that my persistence will get me what it is that, that God wants me to have. Listen, his will is what will be done in my life. His will is not for us to be sick. It's not for us to be demon possessed. His will, that's not our, that's not his will. It's not for us to be addicted. His will is not for us to be oppressed. His will is not for us to be bound and downtrodden. That's not his will for our lives. His will for us is that we be free and live and walk in the liberty that he has been called to. That's his will. But even if we find, as we find in this passage of scripture, that the woman here, she needed a miracle. Come on, I raise my hand. I need a miracle. Many of us, again, we need a miracle. And for the Lord, listen, to call the woman a dog, it feels like it was a very harsh, again, I said a harsh response. That the Lord was given to this woman in her time of crisis, in her time of need. But I'm telling you, this woman, she was not about to give up. She wasn't about to give up on what it was that she was seeking from the Lord. She was not about to give up on her child. And many of us, listen, there's a need that we are not about to give up on. We're not about to give up on the things that we know that God has for us. We are not about to give up on our children. We're not going to give up on our spouses. We're not going to give up on, listen, where there is a situation perhaps we may be lacking in finances. We're not going to give up. We're not going to give up. Why? Because we know the King of Kings. We know the Lord of Lords. And just like this woman, she heard that Jesus was coming. And why was that important to her? Because she knew all the miracles that he had already done prior to coming to the city that she was in. All the miracles that he had done, he had wrought in the lives of the people. She wanted her child to be healed. And even, even before this passage of scripture, there was a, um, the Lord was being, actually he was um, having a discourse with some. For those who were not washing their hands before um, they were eating. And he was saying to them, listen, it's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. It's what comes out of your mouth. And he was giving this discourse. And he was, he was telling the people that they're, you know, what happens on the outside of you? It doesn't matter. But what goes on? What, what comes out of you? The things that comes out of you that are what defiles you. What are your responses? When people say a thing to you, what are your responses when people say something against you? What are, your, what are your responses? What would your response have been in this case when someone had called you out of your name, when you were just trying to get blessed, when you were trying to, my God, receive your miracle, receive what God had for you, what would have been your response? Certainly, no, you wouldn't have talked profanity to the Lord, but what would your response have been? Would you have gone away discouraged and frustrated and confused what would your response, what is your response when perhaps you feel that the Lord is not doing what it is that you want him to do? What is your response? Well, Jesus came to the place and he was tired because he had been working many, many miracles. He had been working many miracles in the lives of the people. And now here comes this woman. Here comes this woman wanting yet another miracle. As I read in the, in the passage of scripture, Jesus didn't want anybody to know that he was there. He wanted to rest. He wanted to rest. But because she had heard of the miracles that the Lord has done, have you heard? Have you heard about Jesus? Have you heard about the things that he can do? Then yet, why are we not receiving the things that we have when we know how powerful he is, when we know what he can do? Yes, he had just fed the 5,000 with the two fish and the five loaves of bread. He had done so many things already. But he called her a dog. He called her a dog. So this woman's response, the atmosphere that she was making sure she had, that she was creating for her miracle to take place, because she had to have an atmosphere of humility. Could we have still been humble 
even in the face of this, I said, how bad do you want it? How desperate are you for your miracle that you can still remain humble? Her reply said what? Even the dogs can eat the crumbs that fall from the children's table. I will take the scraps. Now, many of you may you may have pets and you may uh, that you may allow them in the house and you may not allow them in the house. But back in this day, they were considered unclean. They were not allowed in the Jewish homes. But this woman, she recognized the insult that was being thrown at her. But yet she said, I'll take it. Lord, I'll take it. Whatever you can give me. And listen, sometimes I tell the Lord, listen, if you don't bless me another day in your life, I'm thankful for what you've already done because I know how powerful you are. And I know because you are a good God, every morning you will give me another mercy. Brand new mercies will you give me. I don't even have to ask for them. You're just that good. And this woman here knew that Jesus' power, she knew that his wisdom, she knew that his excellency, listen, she knew that just his very presence, his very voice could heal her daughter. And for that reason, she humbled herself and she fell at his feet and she begged him for mercy. Humility is what is needed in our atmosphere so that miracles and signs and wonders can happen. No, we haven't arrived. We can't do it of our own. The Bible says that pride comes before the downfall, but humility is what allowed the Syrophoenician woman to receive the miracle that she was seeking from the Lord. She needed a miracle from God. So not only was she humble, she also had to know that by faith, the Lord was going to do what she asked him to do. Because in her response to him, she was saying to him, listen, I understand what you're saying. But because you have healed before, by faith, I believe you can heal my daughter. And that's why I'm not going away. That's why I'm being persistent. Many times, listen, we know that we need a thing. And because it's the will of God, the Lord says to us, listen, you can ask me. And when you ask me according to my will, I will hear you. And I will grant you that petition that you have set before me. So maybe it won't happen in a minute. Maybe it won't happen in an hour. Maybe it won't happen in a day. Maybe it won't happen in a year. But if you continue to believe by faith that the Lord is going to do it, he will do it. What is faith? The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things that are not seen, hoped for. The thing that I know that God is going to do, he's going to work it out. He's going to do that, do that thing that I need him to do. And when he does it, it's going to be done, I mean, completely. I'm not going to have to worry about it. I'm not going to have to fear about it. So she knew, the woman knew the custom. She knew that Jews were not allowed to associate themselves with Gentiles. She knew that. And she knew that it would make you know, the hymn unclean. She knew that. But that's why she went to meet Jesus when he was alone. And let me say this with you also, to you also. Sometimes we don't get in our own quiet time. Sometimes we don't meditate on the word of God. We don't get to a place where we can actually just talk to Jesus. And we can share with him. Look, you know, tell him all about your troubles. He'll hear your faintest cry. He'll answer by and by. We've got to have a talk with Jesus all by ourselves. Does he know everything? Yes. He's omniscient. Is he everywhere? Yes. He's omnipresent. He's all powerful. Yes, he is. But he just wants you to articulate what is going on in your life. Ask him for a thing. But you got to get off to yourself. Sometimes you just got to meditate on the word of God. Meditate on God. Ask him. Let him know what's going on in your life. Let him know your needs. Let him know, listen, what you're desperate for. It may be a gift that you're desperate for. It may be something listen, that's going on in your life that you've not told anybody. And you're afraid or ashamed to tell him because you don't think he's going to do it. But she came to meet Jesus when he was 
alone. And when he said to her, listen, why would I take the children's bread and give it to the dogs? Sometimes, listen, things happen to, sh to let the Lord see just how serious we are about a thing, to test our faith. Do you really believe that the Lord can heal? Do you really believe that he can set you free? Do you really believe that he can work the miracle that you need for him to work? Or will you just go away? Will you go away saddened, head held down? Mm-mm. Because the Lord said, listen, because of your faith, because you didn't go away, because you weren't angry, because you didn't cause others to stumble, because I said that to you. Because sometimes we can cause others to stumble because of our response. Because something didn't happen for us, to, you know, right now, quick in a New York minute. We may cause somebody else to stumble because we're saying to them, it won't happen. And just because it doesn't happen for you just right now, doesn't mean that the Lord won't work that situation out for somebody else right now. So be very mindful and very careful. Listen, when you lose faith and you don't cause others to stumble as well. The Lord here is saying, because of your faith, your daughter will be made whole. Without faith, the Bible says, it is impossible for us to please God. So creating that atmosphere for miracles, we have to be humble and then we have to have faith. Only the faith Listen, God responds to faith. He responds to humility. And then he responds to our persistence. I recall the woman who went to the judge and she wanted the judge to avenge her. And, and finally, after she went to the judge, she just kept going back and kept going back. She wanted her land back. She kept going back and kept going back. And finally he said, because this woman basically is getting on my nerves, I'm going to do what it is that she's asked me to do. Persistence is key. Listen, how bad do you need that miracle? How bad do you need God to do something in your life? How bad do you need him to work it out? Because the woman's statement was a statement also of persistence. And sometimes we don't stick to a thing because maybe we're embarrassed about something. We may be embarrassed because maybe somebody said something to us that offended us. And so because of the offense, we leave, we go away. And many times even we find that in churches where uh, we consider that church hurt. We're offended. Maybe somebody was rude to us or seemed rude to us. And we didn't look at it as maybe our faith being tested or them trying to help to get us to another level in God or trying to mature us in the things of God. And so we took it as offensive. And because we got offensive, then we went away. We were embarrassed and we were hurt. We were offended. And then we didn't get what it is that God has for us. Oftentimes, listen, I say to my children, sometimes you, you cut off your nose to spite your face. We'll get angry at a person who is trying to help us and trying to bless us and trying to bring us into the things where God will have for us to be, places where God will have for us to be. And we get angry and we go away and we leave the blessing at the table instead of getting all that God has for us. Persistence is a quality that, me, that men and women, children of God, you need that quality. And the Lord, listen, he honors your persistence. He honored this Syrophoenician woman's persistence. Now, just because you were persistent, again, that doesn't mean that you can manipulate God into doing what you want him to do, particularly if it's not according to his will, because sometimes the Lord will say no to you. And no matter how persistent you are, the answer is still no. But he will let you know that the answer is no. Why? Because the Lord has a greater purpose for you. He has something greater for you that he wants to move you to. But when the Lord says yes, you know that the answer is yes. And that he will do exactly what it is that you've asked for him to do. So not only do you need to be humble. Not only do you need to have faith, but you also need to be persistent in your prayer in order that miracles can abound and thrive in your atmosphere. You can't lose heart when there is a delay. But the Bible says you pray 
without ceasing because it is their persistence that will release the answers that God has for you. Continuing in prayer, continuing in communication with the Lord day and night, night and day. Because at the end of this story, the lesson that we learned from this woman is that the Lord said, because you said this, because of your response, because of your attitude, because of how you handled what I said to you, because you said this, he said, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. Matter of fact, listen, as we were talking, Jesus had healed the woman's child. And the woman, because of her obedience, she then went to her home and she found that her child had been healed. Our words, our thoughts, our actions, our reactions affect what happens in our lives, affects what God does. So it's important that we speak the right words because they become the outcome of our prayers. It's important that we say the right things because they become the outcome of our prayers. So how are we allowing miracles to thrive in our lives is based on the degree of humility that we have, the degree of faith that we have, certainly our obedience and the persistence that we have for the Lord to do a thing in our life. How bad do you want it? How desperate are you? How desperate are you for the power of God to work in your life? How desperate are you for things to turn around in your life? How desperate are you for a change to happen in your life? How desperate are you? Are you desperate enough to learn to be patient? Are you desperate enough to learn to be humble? Are you desperate enough? Listen, you can be bold. You can speak a thing out, but still be humble. Are you desperate enough? Listen, are you able to stand in the gap for somebody else? Are you able, are you, are you able to stand in the gap for your children? Just as the Syrophoenician woman did. Are you able to do that? How desperate are you for God to work a miracle in your life? Listen, the change has to come. This is the time. This is the season for a change to occur in your life that God can do something great and mighty and powerful. And I'm talking about creating an atmosphere, not a temporary atmosphere, not a temporary place for the Lord to dwell, but I'm talking about creating a permanent atmosphere where miracles can be created in your space, where they can thrive and they can grow. And every time you need God to do something, he's able, he's willing to do it. Why? Because you create an atmosphere for miracles. Father God, I just bless your name and I thank you, Lord God, that even as a Syrophoenician woman, Lord God, she boldly came to you, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that we boldly are able to go to you, Lord God, and, and touch you, Lord God, with humility, Lord God. Touch you, Lord God, with, with the, uh, the faith, God, that we need to, Lord, not be offended by things that are said to us, Lord God, but recognizing, Lord, that you love us and you care for us, Lord God, and Lord, that as we are waiting for the things that, that we have asked you for, that we will patiently wait. And not only will we patiently look, wait, God, that God, we will seek you, Lord God, seek a relationship with you, an understanding with you, Lord God, to know, Lord God, that even though, God, it may not happen today, it may not happen tomorrow, God, or the next week, God, we wait patiently on you, God, to work the miracles out in our lives that, God, only you can do. And because only you can do it, Lord God, I know that when you work that miracle, it will be done. It will be done completely. Lord God, I thank you for how you've healed God, delivered God, and, and even for this word, Lord God, that will help us, God, to be persistent in the things of you. Lord, we love you so much, oh God, and we thank you for loving us so much that you sent Jesus, God, to die on the cross, that we might be free, God, through, even through my sins. Lord God, I have the ability, Lord God, to be healed and delivered, oh Lord God, to be forgiven of everything, oh Lord God, that I still can create an atmosphere where miracles and signs and wonders, God, can be worked through me, Lord God. I thank 
thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done. And Lord God, I thank you, God, for making me worthy, oh God. Ah, God, not of myself, God, but because of how good you are. Lord God, I am, God, I'm not less than, Lord God, but Lord, I am above only, I am not beneath. I thank you, Lord God, that even though in this passage of scripture, Lord God, you, you call the woman a dog, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, that even God dogs can eat the scraps. So I take the scraps, Lord God, I take everything, Lord God, that you will do, Lord God, to God prove yourself mighty and strong in my life. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we bless your name, Lord God, for this word, God, of miracles, God, of signs, God, of workings, God, of the manifestation of your glory and your power in your life, oh Lord God. And I will not give up, Lord God. I will not be offended. I will not take down, Lord God. I, God, will seek, God, everything that you have for me. Because everything you have for me, Lord God, is good and it is very good, Lord God. And we appreciate you, God. Appreciate your work. We appreciate your love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Bless you, people of God. Listen, share this word with someone because even though they know that the Lord can work a miracle, somebody wouldn't go to him because they didn't feel that they were worthy. They felt that something was keeping them from going to the Lord. And they were, have been offended by things. And because they've been offended, they left their miracle at the table. They left their blessing back where Jesus was, where the offense happened. Make sure you let them know that their blessing is still there. That the blessing had their name on it. It's their blessing. It's their miracle. And they are in line for that miracle, but they got to create that atmosphere where miracles can thrive. Let them know that there should be no offense in them. My God, we got to remove all, I know I got to go, we got to remove all offense. Sometimes we're offended by things that we shouldn't be offended by. Let us understand that the Lord is working something out in you and, and whatever happens, listen, it will work according to your good if you believe the Lord. If you believe the word of God, it will work out according to your good. So let us not be so offended by everything. Because listen, it's just a trick of the enemy to keep you from getting what God has for you. And I want everything. I, even the scraps. I'll take even the scraps. You all have a wonderful day in the Lord. I love you with the love of Jesus. You go in peace.